Well, the job that I had, I was director of coaching with the responsibility for England's teams. That was the name of it. So the coaching side was meant to be the big thing, of sort of building up interest in promoting the game at all levels, in terms of refereeing, in terms of groundsmen, in terms of player coaches, you know, and and going to, through to the schools and the schoolmasters who were coaching. So the whole wide field of development of football, that was the job. I mean, England had a fixed set of matches, you know, five in a season, this sort of thing. It was the Great British Championship, which was the be-all and end-all for a long time there. We did start to go abroad for little tours and invite people to come back in November and February when the bad weather was on, because we couldn't fit them in any other time because of league club commitments. Uh, the job was really to help the players in their assembled get-togethers for matches, as it were, to combine. You know, you, uh, you as a third person could, could help them and suggest things that might help a particular player to play better by giving him better service, this sort of thing. But the selection of the team was done in the same old way. There was a selection committee of nine people and they used to sit down around a table and select a team. And uh, they would take nominations for goalkeeper. And uh, then whoever got the most votes got in on that basis. And therefore you could get a lot of players, 11 players from 11 different clubs, uh, all who had probably hadn't played more than two or three times with each other, played against each other, you know, this sort of thing. That was the difficulty, it was one of the big difficulties. When they selected the first goalkeeper, I asked them afterwards, the committee, how many of them had seen him play that year, and not one had seen him play, the goalkeeper. So we then organised it so the selectors would go around and view matches and watch particular players so that we did get a better system of putting in a team. We didn't do many tours abroad. Usually England then used to go and play one match and then come back home, you know. But we began to, because we needed to go out to South America and see what South America was like, we began to do these tours. But the World Cup started immediately after the war, 1950, and we had to enter that via the British Championship. The winner of the British Championships, that's between England, Scotland, Ireland and Wales, was going to go. We never really had a team together until uh, the World Cup in Sweden. But then, unfortunately, in the February, we had the Manchester United disaster, which took the heart of our team out. We had to field a new half-back line, pretty well line, total, you know, this sort of thing. And uh, when you lose people like Duncan Edwards and Tommy Taylor and and co, you know, you're losing players of great renown, and we just got them understanding each other and keen, and they were the team that beat Brazil here 4-2 and even missed two penalties in doing it, you know. Then afterwards, we started to experiment again with young players because the selection committee were keen to have a build-up of young players over a period of four years, you know, this sort of thing. Centres of excellence, another way of building, bringing select players together so they can play with the standard of ability and then getting the clubs to accept more responsibility for a, a larger number of youth. I had this big job of being director of coaching and managing all the England teams, although I used to have help with that because sometimes you'd have a, an under-23 tour going on at the same time as we were touring, so someone else would have to look after them then. But I was supervising the lot. I had a busy time uh, running all the courses and so on. I was very busy, but they split the job when I retired, when I went away. I, um, uh, they had a director of coaching, an assistant director of coaching, and they also had a, a manager of England's teams, which is Alf Ramsey. 